This is Lizzie from Let Zoe Spoil You and Sagira from Sagira Salutes You. And together we are Newbie versus Weeaboo. Sagira, Newbie. Lizzie, Weeaboo. It's, it's Newbie, newbie versus Weeaboo. Ahoy. Hi, hi. Hi, yeah. Oh, it's been a while since we recorded one of these. <laughs> yes, yes. Work and life was being the whole work and life malarkey. Yeah. Coming up, it was, well, at the time of recording this, we were coming up to the end of school. So very tired, very uh, needing sleep. <laughs> yes. End of term is always a little bit more mental. And even though not as many kids and stuff, it's still, the job is still like <laughs> tiring. It's organising things for next academic year. That's what gets you because you're like, I'm not ready. Because yeah. you don't oh. want to come back and have a ton of stuff to do. Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> not ready. Not ready for the new term. School's only been out for two days and I'm still shattered because, as I was saying earlier, there was an illegal rave where I am. Mm. That was illegal going rave, on yeah. until about 8am. And there is nothing like it being a Sunday morning, which is what we're recording, and you being in bed, and all you can hear is uns, 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 wobble, 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 coming through you like windows. Not the uh, most gradual wake up. No, no. <laughs> it was like, what's that noise? It won't stop. I've been lying here for three hours. Just stop. Like, why can't they do a silent disco? Yeah, like, that's exactly. a that's a thing. That's that's what the young whippersnappers are doing these days, isn't it? But like. We're in the freaking in the middle countryside. Where did you all come from? <laughs> That's why you could hear it from miles around. <laughs> exactly. Other side of the city. I mean, we're not even a city, we're just a town. Well, one might describe those people as parasites. Yes. And that is something that we <laughs> have linked us onto our new anime of Parasite. Ooh, the Maxim. Yeah, segues. They call me Queen of Segway. So we are up to episode seven. We are bashing through this. <laughs> and episode seven is called A Dark Night's Passing. We open where we left off. And if we remember, Shinichi was running after a supposed other parasite. He doesn't know who it is. He thinks it's his creepy mum, who's now a parasite. He's going along that seawall. And it looks like a slightly CGI, this this running. I don't know what it was. It just seems yeah. a bit different to the rest of the animation. They'd probably put in some generated frames and stuff just to make it look faster. A little bit of budget, say... <laughs> budget clips here and there. They need the budget say, for later on in the series. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a really odd time to use that kind of thing. <laughs> like, ooh, it's CGI and more technical on a wall. <laughs> I'm sure there's other ways you can achieve that effect. <laughs> and Shinichi jumps with his newfound superpowers up in the air. And he lands down. He's like, you're dead. And it's not his mum. It is a man. It is an older man in a spiffy tracksuit. Very of the time, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks confused and startled. Because <laughs> some random boy has just dropped down from the sky <laughs> that he was not expecting. Sonichi doesn't care who it is. And Miggy prepares to fight anyway. But stops. Because Miggy determines that his brain is still intact. There's more of them. Yeah. Yay! That's kind of good because it's like it gives more dynamic to the whole parasite universe, doesn't it? The fact that now Sunichi has found a common ground with someone. Yeah. And the fact that it's like there's another one of these kind of subspecies between human and parasite. Hopefully it makes Miggy feel a little less a little less stupid because now he's found another parasite that also didn't make it to the brain. Yes, yes. <laughs> for whatever it's reason. For Miggy's like ego. Because <laughs> if there's one other out there there must be more out there so that's comforting to know but also um now Sunichi has someone that he can actually talk to about this someone who's going through the same thing he's going through and that must be such a relief the man's mouth becomes independent of the man and acknowledges Miggy is just a hand we find this man's parasite is from his lower face to about his chest area yeah. so yeah so it's kind of like the internal organ area yeah, I always think of it like lungs, heart, throat, esophagus part. And I started to think, what would I rather have? Would I rather have chin parasite or hand parasite, which is hand less... parasite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do not need another chin on top of my already developing gourd. However, think of how much you do with your hand. Like there is actually quite... And once Miggy takes over, you've lost that control. So I don't know. Yeah. But I Although don't, face... I don't want... 
yeah, I don't want it coming out my face. Could be your ass. <laughs> I mean, I Had don't know why ass. a parasite would decide, oh, look at that hole. That's my point of entrance. It's like it's a there long journey be... to the head. Hey, they may not know when they get there what they're aiming for. They just know they've got to get inside the body and up to the top. So if all they've got, if they, I mean, imagine if one of the spores fell in the toilet and it yeah. cracks out and it's like, oh, there's a hole. <laughs> That's the goal. Up it goes. And then, I don't know, it gets stuck in the intestines or something. And then yeah. that's where you it plays. find out the person has got, like, you know, yeah, chronic constipation, toxic megacolon, <laughs> something like that. Basically, it's going to be my parasite. It gets there, finds out it's got IBD and go, oh, my God, there's an obstruction. And then I just get parasite colon, which is not too far from the truth. Well, I was going to say your colon talks to you anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> mostly i am not happy we've also find that the chin parasite is more feisty than miggy is and yeah. there actually is a reason the man gives us his tragic backstory that his wife run ran off with he did he think someone else or did he th just think it's because of his personality because he I says think, think i'm such a sad sack yeah which is kind of a little true but basically yeah i think the wife ran off with either somebody else or just ran off because she was a bit fed up of having a herbivore man and she wanted a bit more man in her man. Unfortunately, her before men is kind of the state of most Japanese guys. But yeah, she's tired of him and she goes off and he was going off to jump off a cliff because he couldn't live without her. But then he doesn't have it in him to follow through with that. And I think quite a few people feel that. Like it's, I'd have nothing to live for. However, I haven't, there is something though that is stopping yeah. me from doing that, you know. There, there must be something. He could do better. He's the, Yes, he's a softie. Definitely. But, you know, all you need to find is that girl that wants someone, like, soft and caring and in touch with their emotions. Okay, yeah, he's a bit too emotional. But still... And that's, yeah. that's the thing. Everyone likes the idea of a bad boy. But what you really want is someone just to look after you. Yeah. You know, and care about you. And then a, a majority... Not a majority, but some women find out later in life that actually that's what they need. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, I spent all my time wasting my life on these men who are, you know, they're bad boys. And, yeah, they, you know, they're fun and exciting, but they... They're independent as well, and yeah. they like to no do their independent thing. In that, rather than no, a guy but that will generally like take care of you and stuff. Exactly, and they are out there. <laughs> You've got one. I got one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so he's about to jump off, and he sits and admires the sunset. You know that just that alone is worth living for. You know the beautiful scenery, and 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 also I feel like this is the cliff where Mum. I know. I was going to say taken. a lot happens on this cliff in this, yeah. this place. I think it must be a tourist site because or mm. a, a quite a famous site because people seem to go to this cliff to admire the sunset. So it must be like one of those spots that's going to be quite picturesque. Photo opportunity area. Yeah. It seems like he's in that area. But then Nigadol knows Booger appears and inserts himself in the man's neck. Yeah. This forces him because he does it at such speed. It forces him off the cliff and he falls into the water. Now, at this point, the parasite is bored of his story. <laughs> He's like, you are telling it. So boring. <laughs> so he takes over and he says that as the man was sinking, he stopped breathing. So that stopped him from getting to his brain. Yeah. So he had to think quick and he just kind of took over whatever he could, which ended up being the chin mouth area. And then he swam back to the surface and took some breaths for him to keep him alive. And that's why he never made it to the brain. Which I think is a fair reason. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like, so, well, we know parasites are programmed very much for their own survival and keeping the host alive. So, you know, this one made the, the decision to be like, okay, if I go to the brain, it's going to be brain dead. And it's going to yeah. be, yeah. Like, it's no, so I've got to keep this body alive long enough for me to attach to it however I can. We go back to Sinichi and we find that actually they can both talk at the same time. He hasn't just taken over his mouth. Uh, he can actually move down to the chin so that both of them can have a conversation, which is good. Yeah. So I think it would have been very annoying if it was <laughs> for us as watchers if it was the other way around. The man was glad when they knew another parasite was coming and it was Shinichi, as now they know there's more like them. So it would seem that this guy hasn't been a like parasite hybrid very long. No, and he's also and been he's... a bit of an isolated area, so he's not actually bumped into any other parasites yet. And they want to hear Miggy's origin stories. How did you become a hand? But first, Sinichi asks if they can move to the conversation to another area, which is code for, I need to be at the hospital because dad might get yeah. attacked. So <laughs> he doesn't say that yet because it's, it's all part of the origin story. But they introduce themselves before they move. And the man's name is Mamaru. Mamaru? 
They call him Uda. Because <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, isn't he Uda? Yeah, that's his last name, but his first Memora? name is like Mem Mem M A M O R U. Mamora. Mamora. Something like that. Mamoru. Yeah, but we're going to call him Uda because that's much easier. Yeah, I've been, I've been calling him Uda. <laughs> and also, Zunichi calls him Uda, so yeah. it's less confusing. So, yes, Uda. And the parasite is called Parasite. <laughs> So this whole thing is about this parasite, obviously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we've finally found him, the main <laughs> character. This whole time we've been waiting. But yes, yeah, so they just kept it simple, called him Parasite. At the hospital, Uda is moved by Sinichi's story, the tragedy of yeah. losing his mum and everything. And he's clearly a sensitive man. <laughs> he is. But I think they've put this character in just to show Sinichi's change. Yeah. But we'll get into that more. They notice the difference in the two parasites where Miggy gets his knowledge from books and that's why he's kind of well-spoken and he does things in a very logical way, etc. Yeah. But the parasite learnt from watching telly. <laughs> now, isn't this true of personalities, like especially children? Like We've seen it a few times, haven't we, where you'll have a child who has an American accent and you're like, oh, are you from America or are your parents American? No, just watched a lot of telly. It's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you learned your accent from watching telly. That's crazy. Yep. But, yeah, so that's why they're so different in yeah. the way that they are, which I like as well. Yeah, but... and it also does highlight the fact that there are different ways to learn and different ways to speak and the fact that parasites have a lot more individuality to them. Because I suppose because Miggy chose to like research and use the computer and stuff, and like his environment affects his learning pattern. And this one's a little bit more just less feisty. learned environment, and just like was like, yeah, TV was my like you know education. Well, I feel like he, I feel like he's more worldly in terms of like social rather than yeah. Miggy is more intellectual. But <laughs> yeah, the TV parasite. I mean, he had to learn from the TV because, as he said, his guy was just sat on. The sofa all the time watching telly crying so yeah. that's where he had <laughs> to be you know? whereas miggy because uh, shinichi is a student he has the books he has yeah. the internet you know he has all that stuff around him for miggy to go off and explore so yeah it's also the way that the person that their their host is lives yeah. yeah uda says that he works in a hotel one town over that's very convenient and if he senses a parasite they would tell shinichi he now has an ally. Yay. yay! Finally, no longer the lone wolf. So, yay, go team didn't make it to the brain. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> go team hybrid. Nighttime, and Miggy wakes Sinichi, wanting to tell Sinichi the thing that he didn't get to tell him earlier. So, if we remember back to the last episode, as he was running up to see who this parasite was, Miggy was like, Sinichi, I have to tell you something. He's like, not now. <laughs> it's later. I am. I'm in bloodlust. I have to complete this task. Yeah, so this one this is a bit of a bombshell. Oh, it really is. I am surprised that Miggy tried to explain it at this point because it's like you have a lot to say in a very short amount of time. So, yes, this was the proper time to do it. But he asked Sinichi if he's noticed that his running speed is faster and his jumping is higher. Yeah, and there's a transformation the happening. Olympic athlete. Yes, and it's like... Well, if he didn't notice, then he's not very aware of himself. <laughs> like, no, surely I always ran like this. No. <laughs> but that's not just the only thing that's happening. Also, Miggy is now able to separate himself away from the body several times. However, as he will, as he gets smaller, his intellect diminishes. Yeah. So he gets silly, stupider and stupider. You get one of the, like, I find one of the creepiest bits so far of the series. It's not all the, like, weird blood and chopping and mincemeat people it's the bit when all the mini miggies reform and they all kind of turn into that and if anyone who knows me knows i've got this weird childhood phobia of the blob from watching this the stupid blob film back when well, i was yeah. a kid and it I was, was like, scary and i was just like and, I was, and the stupid steve mcqueen blob film not the 80s version the steve mcqueen one where it's just literally like they keep throwing jam on things to make it look like people are dissolving but as a kid i mean and it's like i was roughly the same age when i saw silence of the lambs and i still think that's one of the most beautiful movies ever but the blob there's just an unknown blob like merging and eating people freaked me out so when mickey started reforming and it's kind of layers on top of each other in this weird blob creature I'm like, i don't like this this go back to mm. looking more like a thing than a blob no blobs for me <laughs> don't like blobs no blobs so we're both fighting phobias in this yeah <laughs> series now 
<laughs> yeah, well, as long as they're like murderous mutaty blob things with knives, I'm fine. But if it's just a blob of flesh that's a bit weird, then I'm like, no, not, not into that. Well, just to add more to Simichi's poor brain, he also tells him that currently they are only talking to about 70% of the original Miggy because when he tried to fix his heart, or he did fix his heart, he was successful, bits of him were left behind because he was around the, the um, blood system trying to like pull all the nutrients, trying to get it send you back to some sort of normality but some of them just didn't want to come back and they're like no we're, we're happy over here and we're happy around here we're happy up here yeah. so he's kind of dispersed throughout the body and that could be or possibly is why he is turning into a super being Sinichi asks if they have gotten to his brain Miggy doesn't know as they are too small to communicate with but he doubts it he's like I don't think they're clever enough to start yeah you know, messing about with that. Like, if his, like, show of, like, the smaller he gets, the less intelligent they are. Like, microscopic Miggy cells and are just going to be floating around without any real consciousness. So even if they are in the brain, they're not going to know. They're not going to know. But obviously, having the power and skills and the cells of a parasite on you is definitely going to improve your, like, speed and reflexes. But if but then... those random cells decide to reform... Well, I was going to say, are they smart enough to connect to one another? Because if they are, then that's, and they make it to the brain, then, well, this info gets Sinichi thinking about his emotions. And he's saying that no matter how strong his feelings are, he cannot cry. And this shows that while Uda can cry like a fountain, <laughs> yeah. even with his parasite, now that he can't cry, it's like, well, that's, that's me. That's my own problem so why is it that i can't cry anymore yeah. although to be fair we haven't seen sunichi cry this whole time <laughs> well, we've seen him get pretty upset but at the same upset, time, but he's... you know it wasn't until like family members started dying that he really had a proper need to cry and yeah, yeah and then he's lost he feels like he's lost some of his humanity because he cannot connect to his own emotions well that's it and if miggy has no emotions and he's starting to have no emotions the Miggy is winning yeah. the battle of the body. Sinichi is contemplating life, standing on a bridge, when Mickey appears, who is the girl from the hotel that he stayed at. He asks her if he seems normal, and she says, yes. However, she flips it and says that he looks like he's crying inside, but keeping it all in. And she's worried about him, so she runs away upset. She's like, oh, you're just so sad. So like, you tell me anything every time I try and talk to you. And it's like, you haven't even met twice, girl. I know you've got a bit of a crush because <laughs> you find him hot. But she's like, you won't talk to me. He's like, girl, you just stayed in your hotel. Can you imagine going and staying in a hotel? And then, one, and then like, the people that own the hotel are like, why don't you ever talk to me? I'm like, uh... I just want my 7 a.m. wake up call, please. <laughs> But Uda calls at this point, saying that he's near a parasite and he thinks it's the one Sunichi wants. He says that he's nearby and he's going to stall it, but then Sunichi warns him, do not do that. Because <laughs> if it works out that you're a human parasite cross, it will get mad and kill you. Because <laughs> yeah. they don't like you. <laughs> Uda's like, oh, oh dear, did not know that. <laughs> It's a good thing that Uda met Sunichi yeah. because he could possibly be dead by now. But Uda says that he'll keep it busy until Sunichi arrives. So he goes running off because, you know, he's wearing a tracksuit. Clearly, he's a fit man. <laughs> oh, poor Uda. <laughs> poor Uda. Um, but he says that he'll try and lead him to Sunichi so that when so that they can meet somewhere and Sunichi can get his revenge. As Sunichi runs, Miggy is tired. <laughs> it's like, no, it's that time of day. He's like, so I, I just sleep. It's like, no! <laughs> but he's like, he's very kind, though, because before he goes to sleep, he turns <laughs> Sunichi's hand into a giant sword. Yeah. You're like, that's not unsuspicious or anything. No. Unsuspicious. It means he can't really return to anywhere people for the next four hours with his sword yeah. up. <laughs> so Sunichi's like, okay, down to me then. Uda runs to the cliffside, our typical cliffside where we yeah. like to go. Cliff and he's trapped. Me. Yes, he's trapped. And then Creepy Mum appears. So it's the correct parasite. She tells Uda that he's the second conscious human, therefore a hindrance, and will be eliminated. Creepy parasite transformation! Yeah. Creepy Mum and... <laughs> 
creepy mum and parasite fight. Parasite notices that she's going for the same spot and is repe repeating the moves over and over again. He misses an attack and Uda is stabbed in the heart and once again falls backwards over the cliff. <laughs> Does not fall in the sea this time, however. He lands on a little like ledgy thing. At crop. Hmm. And Creepy Mum explains that when you can't find the parasite's weak spot, just go for the human heart. I, you know, I mean, it's logical. Read... Yeah, but go for the part that's going to kill you. Thinking like the other parasites, because once they take over the brain, they think they're just, they already think that they are superior. But they don't do the research that the hybrids do to find out about human instinct, environment, tactics, or anything, because they already think that they're better. And it's like, oh, you never underestimate your enemy just because you think mm -hmm. you're a superior. And I think, yeah, that is the, you know, the hybrid's advantage. And also, they can learn from their human counterparts things that they may not be able to learn from a book. You have to learn from experience. Yeah. So, yeah, they have got the upper hand. Sunichi appears and Creepy Mum can sense Miggy's asleep. She's confused, however, that Sunichi is not dead because she's like, I stabbed you in the heart. <laughs> you should be dead. But next time she'll cut off the head. So, you know, better oh, safe good. than sorry. So he attacks Shinichi, but he still has his superhuman agility. So even though Miggy's asleep, little Miggy's are still hard at work. Again, that's quite worrying. Because when he appears, she says, I can sense him, but it's a very weak wavelength. Is there sensing Miggy and Miggy's like thoughts and vibrations, but not giving any kind of credence and thought to any of the other parasite genes that might just be freestyling around Shinichi? Because they still don't really see that humans are a threat. And I'm like, mm. oh, you, yeah. Creepy Mum is very confused by the whole situation. And because of the confusion, gets sliced. Sinichi is about to cut off the head, but then Creepy Mum raises her hand, showing the scar. Yeah. And of course, this makes Sinichi hesitate because he starts remembering his mum. Yeah. Even though she's a gross parasite transformed thing, it's still his mum's yeah. body. I mean, and he has <sighs> enough guilt that it's his fault she got that scar in the first place. Imagine how much guilt he'd carry if it's his fault that, you know... His mum is dead and... He... he was the one to finish her off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you can understand the hesitation. Cooper mum sees this as a benefit and she goes to slice and she cuts his head, which makes him fall over, and she's like, Maha, you dead. And all seems lost. But then Creepy mum's head is cut off and the body falls to the sea. Gosh, can you imagine if they, like, went in that area and started looking around for bodies? <laughs> yes. Yeah. so many down there. <laughs> Maybe that's why they don't. Maybe they're just like, you know what? <laughs> we find out that it is Uda and Parasite who cut off the head. So Uda's not dead. Yeah. Yay. Which I, I was kind of, like, a little bit like, why bring in a, such a good character if you're only going to kill him off so yeah. quickly? But like, it's this like, is Game of Thrones, people. <laughs> it had enough like exposition about like, oh, I've taken over this much of him. Like you wouldn't have found out the precise area, and then you'd be thinking. So I was like, he's going to have moved the heart. There's going to be a reason for it because there was no point in him existing if it was to just die at mum death. But well, I was surprised like that he did that because, like you say, we didn't know how much he had taken over. But yeah, Parasite had moved. Well, he could tell that mum would kept going for the same area, which was the heart. Yeah. So he's like, hmm, I should move that. And he just takes it all and moves it across so that they none of his internal organs got pierced, which is really clever. That's fast thinking on Parasite's side. Uda says that, Shinichi, he says, I know that's not really your mum, but you shouldn't have to be the one to kill her, yeah. which is like, uh -huh. So he is a sensitive, nice man. But yeah, creepy parasite mum thing head now is just lying on the floor. <laughs> like, and they explain, parasite explains what he did. And then creepy parasite mum dies. So that's now no longer a threat. That one is dead. Yeah. On to the next one. <laughs> yes, it's like this part of the saga is now done. Dad is safe in commas. Cause... <laughs> yeah. He's physically safe, but emotionally distraught. At Sunichi's hotel, he says goodbye to Mickey and she hopes he'll come back. Please come back soon. Don't leave me, good looking boy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she gets many visitors around. No, there. you really, especially not like hot young guys. It's yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> They're off, going off to the city. Sunset cliffside, and Dad and Sunichi have a heart to heart. 
and dad wanted him to know that he is loved and he said even up until your mum passed she still loved you and it's like oh and then Sunichi asks about the incident asking if mum suffered which you kind of want to know but you kind of don't want to know either yeah. But, yeah but holding back the tears dad says no it was too quick and with that Sunichi collapses everything just catches up with him and he's yeah. like now this is interesting. Back at the city, Kana and Murano both sense that Sunichi is back, but they haven't seen him yet. And it seems like Kana is further away than Murano is. So I don't know if yeah. they've got equal power or she's got kind of got slightly. I think it's. I mean, it's implied that Kana is more perceptive than mm. Murano. Mm. She's she's got more of this female intuition going on. But yep, Sunichi turns up and he's like, "Hey," and that's the end. <laughs> I like that because I, I like the fact that he turns around and it's like obviously in the opening he looks a little bit different in some points and obviously from the manga I remember him like I don't remember him looking and then when he turns around I'm like that's the Shinichi I remember and he's like yeah he's been for a lot and he's come back even more good looking yeah I mean we're only up to episode seven you said there's 25 episodes yeah so he's going to be a good looking what well, Mostly a good looking boy throughout the series. I can only imagine the transformations that are going to happen. So I'm not going to I'm not going to say yes, he'll be handsome for the rest of it because he's changed so much already. Who knows? Yeah. And also you you're only really as attractive as sometimes as your personality. So there's there's aspects yeah. of that going on as well. That's true, yeah. But then we move on to episode eight, which is called Freezing Point. We open now with a very pregnant Rico. And she's talking to a parasite person. We don't know who it is yet because it's all face and it's like, blah, 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 I eat people. <laughs> she tells him to observe Sinichi, but don't kill him. He shows the potential of what their kind can do. So she's very interested. I mean, I know, she, I know she's highly intelligent for a parasite, but I feel like she, she acts as if she's more regal than the others as well. Like yeah. she's got some sort of status. Well, I guess it's because of the intellect. Have you noticed how the smarter parasites or the ones that like tend to be the female ones so far? So obviously yes. mum parasite knew how to track and knew like, and so it's all tied in with that idea of, yeah, female mm. intuition and, mm. and maturity cycles, how women mature faster. But the parasite turns into a teenage boy. So we know that he's going to be spying on him that way. And then we have the intro. I finally know the music. It's because every time I thought about the intro, I just kept wanting to go into da 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 It's like, yeah. no, they're two completely different songs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't help it because instead of humming, I don't, because I don't hum, everything is da 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 da. And like, so everything, so it doesn't matter what I sing, it comes out da 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 da. And people are like, what are you humming? I'm like, can't you tell? No. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm tone deaf. But yes, I've now got the tune, so it's okay. It was driving me crazy that I couldn't remember it. I'd be like, what is it? And then like every time I watch an episode, I'd listen to the first bit and go, okay, da 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 Okay, that's in my head. Now I watch the episode, I'm like, how does the intro go? Damn it. Especially because <laughs> like, it's about some juxtaposizing like themes and musical riffs, because then it goes a bit like skrillex and a bit like metal and then a bit, yeah. Well, I don't watch the whole intro every time. I just listen to the first couple of bars and then okay. fast forward. I, I like the intro. <laughs> Okay, so into the episode, Kana walks out of school and Misato is waiting for her. Who's Misato? That's a totally different series. <laughs> Mitsuo. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, so she's just turned up and going, hey, you're going to get in a, there's a, a robot. <laughs> there's an Evangelion crossover. <laughs> Where Misato realises that, like, no, Shinichi would make a much better, like, oh. Ava pilot than Shinji. And she's like, oi, Shinichi, get in the robot. And he goes, okay. Robot. And then he uses his parasite oh. powers to merge with it. And it is still the soul of his dead mum who loved him. <laughs> and they use their parasite powers to, yeah, take over the world. We, we've started this episode saying we were tired. I think I could be <laughs> forgiven <laughs> for misreading my notes. <laughs> Hey, I just thought we came up with a great idea for a crossover. Makes sense. Let's call him up. Let's tell him, hey. Let's take <laughs> some my theme of I seem to somehow like watching the same anime in different skins over <laughs> and over. Right. Let me start that again. Kana walks out of school and Mitsuo is waiting for her, not Misato. He sees that she's looking at a picture of Shinichi on her phone, the pervert. He gets jealous. Yeah. 
And I still can't get over this thing of taking pictures of classmates and stuff and then perving over them. I just, I know you say it's like a Japanese thing and yeah. you've got like best boy, best girl, whatever. And it's like, okay, that's fine for a cultural thing. But as someone, like, I can't imagine doing it here. Like seeing a boy that you like taking the picture and then it being like, oh, you got the person on your phone. It's like, yeah, that you get the co yeah. mic taken out of you. It's like, oh. Yeah, but. <laughs> I mean, I've got so used to seeing it that I've just started taking it as a normal thing because they're so into like idol culture and just turning people into idols. Mm. I think it's because like they're not really taught to like make meaningful connections with each other, but they're taught to like worship and idolize like from afar. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So this sends him into a jealous rage, and the pop and we cut to the popular boys who are leaving school, who's like Shinichi's little cohort now because they all like like we'll stick up for you. They see Mitsuo, who is waiting for Sunichi now. Sunichi arrives and they're like, hey, he's waiting for you. Hey, look, uh, he's waiting for you. And it's yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, you know what happened last time. You don't know he's got superpowers. So they go back to the clearing where the big brawl happened. Because why not? Yeah, it's a patch of grass that no one yep. can see from the outside, <laughs> and really. Fence, fences and tall buildings. So Mitsuo questions the relationship with Kana and Sunichi dismiss dismisses the whole thing, saying that he's not really seen her. So from like for an audience perspective, it's like, okay, good. So he's still all about Murano and yeah. he's not being a douchebag in that way. He hasn't really thought about Kana at all, really. Mitsuo doesn't really believe him, so he tries to beat him up. And now this time, Sunichi is calm, cool, and collect, and yeah. he reacts at super speed to all these punches. He's like <laughs> <laughs> And like the little hop he does over the kicks. He's like, I'm just going to yeah. jump over them like you're a skipping rope. <laughs> and the funny part is, is when he grabs his uh, foot, because he goes to kick him, he grabs the foot and he kind of pushes him away out of his shoe. Yeah. And then Murano arrives. She's like, what's going on? He's like, oh, nothing. I'll put this here. Yeah. And he just places his shoe <laughs> yeah, on the ground. I'll just leave your shoe here. And she must be like, why the fudge is she taking the boy's shoe? And the boy's sitting on the ground looking all like, oh, he stole my shoe. <laughs> It's just the way he's just coming out. I'll leave this here for you. <laughs> In town, Murano says that Sinichi seems different. Oh, finally. And once again, questions who he is. So I stop asking him. This time, he plays with her and is a lot more suave. And he's like, mm, maybe I've changed. <laughs> it's like, okay. He's had a bit Calm of down, confidence Sinichi. beats. So before, he's like, he's really like obsessed with making sure everyone knows who he is and that he's not changed, etc. But now he's at the point of, you know, he's accepting those changes a little bit yeah. because they're kind of benefiting him rather than, you know, being this horrific, I've got this thing inside me that wants to eat people because he's got over that fact. And he's like, well, no, he's my nutrients. Therefore, it's all cool. And I've now got superpowers. I'm awesome. So yeah, yeah, it's getting, yeah. <laughs> but you can say a little bit too much ego because it doesn't really work in his favour in the rest of the episode. Somewhere in the mall, Kana is there and she senses Sunichi coming again. But she doesn't know why. She doesn't understand why she's got this power. She's like, why is it I can tell whenever he's near? And I wrote that bit in. It's literally one line, but it comes up again later. Yeah. <sighs> Such a waste of paper. <laughs> At home, dad is now drinking and he looks very gaunt. He look, His cheeks are sunk in. He's, he's looking a bit bony and it's like okay dad's really not doing well and he's sat in the dark which is never a good sign unless you're watching an epic movie so Nietzsche suggests that they get a housekeeper and at first dad's like how can you suggest such a thing and then he just can't he hasn't got the fight and he's like just yeah. do what you want i don't care anymore just whatever yes and it's really sad to see because mom and dad were actually a really nice couple and yeah. quite, quite nice personality so see dad going through this isn't great in the night miggy is surfing the web and Sinichi confides in him, saying how he can't cry. So he's now really concerned about, because, I mean, like, you see your dad like that, and then things change, and your mum's not there anymore, and, yeah, you think that you feel something. Yeah. He feels like he's lost a part of his humanity, and Miggy thinks he's being stupid. Of course Miggy thinks this. He doesn't understand what it means to cry. <laughs> no, parasites <laughs> he, he don't has cry. no mention. It's like, don't confide in the thing that thinks crying and emotions are dumb, because <laughs> it's going to be like, you're fine, don't worry. And that's I've the point survived. where you normally think, oh shit, I'm worried now. Because if if the parasite thing thinks I'm I'm fine the way I am, then I'm clearly not fine. <laughs> we get like an internal monologue of Sneech telling us how he's changed. For one thing, it's his hearing. It's heightened. So he can hear distant conversations. 
However, he looks at Morano and he starts to hear a man's voice saying, pigs, filthy pigs. And it's like, why? Like, is that he's hearing that from Morano? Is he hearing that from inside himself or is he hearing it? I'm assuming he's hearing just people being dicks out and about in society. Right. This, and so then so it's just that like questions of humanity and being able to hear other people, you know, that wonderful question of who is the monster. So you, it's all the conversations and there's too many voices yeah. and it's all getting to him. Yeah, and I think that one is someone, someone's thoughts be, thinking about Murano because there's a lot mm. of, like, hatred to women going on at this time. Yeah. Well, this makes him stop listening. He's like, no, get out of my head. And then Sinichi hears something calling to him. He goes to a road where a puppy lies injured. I'm like, oh, no. More I, just, I'm just, I just put my head in my hands and I was like, oh, not again. <laughs> oh, not another one. They go and check on it and Miggy says its organs are mush. And it's like, don't say mush, just say destroyed. Or say, mush just seems like it's been pulverized. No, yeah. I don't like the wording. Yeah, but, yeah, but Miggy's very matter of fact. I it's... know, but well, be more intellectual about it. They've been you know like i say destroyed not <laughs> anyway uh and miggy thinks it will die in 10 minutes so that just makes me question can sunichi now talk to animals as well like is well it... he can he's getting more animal like senses because parasites obviously not quite human but when we still don't know where they come from but parasites can sense other parasites and kind of and sense intent and stuff so some of that is being shared with shinichi so shinichi is now a being able to hear the conversations of people but also kind of sense intent almost like an empathic power I and mean, then combined it's also can sense it from animals can sense some kind of like co connection to like what they could be feeling and going through he takes the puppy to a quiet park so he can so the puppy can die in peace. And that's, you know, that's still hum that bit of humanity. He doesn't want the puppy to be alone. Uh, so he's cuddling in his arms saying, like, this is much nicer than the road. And it's like, oh, bitch. Morano arrives. And although he's caring for the puppy, his tone is very blunt about the condition. He's just like, it's going to die. Like, there's no consideration for her. It's like, the ease are in going, it's been hurt. I'm just taking care of it. I know it's going to die. But no, no, he's just like, it's going to die. <laughs> and then you're kind of like, oh. Oh, that's not Sunichi. Uh oh. Morano says how she's worried about Sunichi and how he seems cold and distant. Now, the puppy dies, which we all knew was going to happen. So Sunichi throws it in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, no, the puppy. No, I know. I was, I was like, oh God. Yeah, but but Morano's just like, what the like. I know. I'm sure there are people out there who, you know, may do that to their pet. Might maybe a hamster or a fish. I don't know. I don't, I, I, in my mind, the idea of throwing something that was once living in the bin, like, traumatizes yes, me. But that's because you've got your humanity fully oh intact. Because even oh. I wouldn't throw a puppy in the bin. I would be oh like, I would, I would take it to some animal shelter and go, I found a dead puppy. Please, please. Well. Morano's got my respect back because you know before I said oh she walked away from the cat she you know she should have done something well now Morano is devastated that yeah. he's done this I'm like okay she's got something he explains that the dog is gone so now it's just the dog form of meat yes. so just a, why what's it? just meat shaped like a dog yeah he still wouldn't throw meat in the bin and he has no emotion and it's all logic and it's like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah. which is it's really jarring, though, because it's like, I'll care for this puppy. I'll, I'll hold it and make sure it's, you know, it dies in a nice, peaceful way. OK, in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Like a it's, real like juxtaposition. It's like, like you kind of knew the steps to making things better for the puppy. But then when the puppy stopped existing as a living entity, it was just a thing. And it's like, OK, so I've done the human nice thing. Now I can just move on. So, yeah, you've been. Well, Murano now knows that he's different and she runs away crying, which is, I mean, me personally, I'd get the puppy out of the bin and bury it myself. But, yeah. you know, she's too devastated by the whole situation, just wants to get away from it. I mean, I think so, obviously, like, this is the boy she really likes, you know, this is yeah. like, you know, the one that she's going to up and marry. And all of a sudden now he doesn't care about puppies. And also in, I think, the second episode, they were talking about how she's an animal lover. So <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. But Sunichi asks Miggy if what he said was wrong. And Miggy explains that he didn't think there was anything wrong with what he said, but he also acknowledges that 
that is something that he would say. Yeah. Miggy would say that Sunichi would not. So he's saying Sunichi's personality has changed and he is becoming more like Miggy. And Sunichi appreciates the honesty of what yeah. Miggy's saying because he's more logical now. And yeah. it's like not, so not he as devastating. So has to make a conscious effort to stay in touch with his humanity. Yes. So Sunichi takes the puppy and buries it by a tree. And he says that he's doing that because now the puppy, as it deteriorates, the nutrients will go into the ground and give life to the tree. And then he's like, why didn't I just do that first? Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it at least seemed normal. <laughs> Still logical, like, but more normal. Yeah. He wouldn't be fighting with Morana now if he had just done that in the first place. Yes. So, yeah. Mental note, don't throw cute animals in the bin. At school, Sneechi tries to talk to Morano, but she's not ready. And I totally agree with her. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, I have a mental image in my head now. That I cannot get rid of. So you're going to have to wait. Miggy senses a parasite and says it's new with no murderous intent. Phew. <laughs> Miggy thinks they should meet in a public area. As it has the same calm persona as Rico, it could be reasoned with. So they might be able to just talk and not have to worry about creepy parasite transformations and <laughs> death <buff>. slash blip. <laughs> so they're waiting on like the stairwell and the boy arrives and he is surprised how strong Sunichi seems. So they obviously notice something about Sunichi, but they're not quite sure what yet. Kazuki arrives and stands up for Sunichi. Oh, <laughs> but, but the boy calmly punches him in the face. <laughs> I really like I'm that. Like... Just... <laughs> so, Shut up. You're not part of this conversation. He's like, don't interrupt. <laughs> I was like, fair enough. <laughs> he has just come down threatening this guy and he knows nothing about him or what they're talking about. His name is Hideo. 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 I've had to do it phonetically, as always. He wants to be Sunichi's friend, obviously. Yeah. And he's in Murano's class. So that gives Sunichi more of a reason to keep an eye on him. He says he looks forward to joint PE because the two classes are <laughs> joint PE. And they, he gives the ultimate creepy grin. Yeah. What was that grin? Oh, my God. He's like, oh, you not to be trusted. No, not in the slightest. <laughs> no, no, no. We go to PE and the girls talk about the new boy. They're all like, oh, look at you. He's so cute. <laughs> I thought you liked him. <laughs> so, <laughs> well time. so we all know that he's a good looking boy, this new boy. Hideo and Sunichi talk alone. Sunichi asks when he's going to kill him. <laughs> he's like, well, clearly you're here to kill me because everyone else has come yeah, to kill me. Past knowledge dictates that you want me dead. <laughs> well, Hideo says he is wrong. He's like, no, no, I will not kill you. And Sunichi asks if he's anything to do with Rico, which Hideo says is her new name. So she must have changed her name at some point. Yes. Well, which she did say like, her old personality is gone, so she would have changed her name to start a new life. But he said it's her new name, but that was her old name because of she was a teacher, wasn't she? And then after she got fired from school, that's when she says she needed to start a new life. Yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> well, she was going by her her first name before, no, or her second name before. Oh. I can never remember which one, because Japanese names are different to ours. She was going by her second because she was a teacher, wasn't she? So they always yeah. called him Tamara or whatever her name was. Yes. So now we have new info dropped. <laughs> He's not there to kill anyone. He's not killed for some time. He's been living off human food, and it could be the start of their species' coexistence. <laughs> Miggy is very interested, but still doesn't trust him. No. You know what, Miggy? Never do I. No, not anyone <laughs> that has that kind of a creepy smile. And also because in other any other world, he would be a hot boy, but he's got mm. those slightly dead eyes, and, and it's just like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. There's something not right about you. Yeah, exactly. He's got that look of someone who is not to be trusted. But Miggy's like, time to go. Let's go. Yep, we don't need to talk about this anymore. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> and Janice is confused. Like, why did we leave so quickly? There's so much more we need to talk about. And Miggy says he needs to sleep. And because they don't know Hideo, if he found out that he has a weakness, he could possibly kill them because, yeah. you know, as we, as we know, he's not as strong as when Miggy is asleep. And also, if Miggy is asleep, they can't sense him, etc. I mean, it's not so much a problem at the moment because they keep saying that they're getting a really weak signal of Miggy. And 
to them that means that Miggy's still awake it's just a weak signal yeah. so they're not entirely certain as to why that is so they can kind of ride this train a little bit longer yeah, before the facts are, yeah, out yeah in school Murano thinks about the puppy incident and is confused as he threw the puppy in the bin, but he cared for it in the first place. So exactly the same feelings as I was yeah. having. <laughs> like, why? But Sinichi is trying to figure out if the two species can coexist. He concludes they are still not to be trusted. Yep, they eat people. <laughs> as they have no more emotions than an insect. I don't know. I don't Do insects have emotions? I have no idea. <laughs> no, well, insects, and because a lot of insects, are parasites. And so, they're like, instinctual. Yeah. Mm. Although, have you seen that video of the bees? There's like a video of some honeybees. One of them got covered in sap or something, and the other bees are trying to save him by getting all the sap off him. Aww. Like they care, they care yeah. for their comrades. No, bees are one of the nice insects. You know, I like, like wasps that lay their eggs inside their victims and things like that. No, no, I like a bumblebee bee. But ultimately, Sunichi cannot forget what they have done. I mean, you know, they've eaten people. They killed his mother. Um, they're threatening his friends, they're threatening yeah. him. There's a blatant disregard for humanity in most situations. Yes, yeah, so Sneetchy's like, ultimately, no, I cannot trust them right now. Filled with rage, he turns and poor Murano, who is scared off by his intense face. Yeah. He's just like, she's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> I feel bad because Shinichi's like, oh God, worst timing because he's all like, I'm going to kill them all. And he turns around and he's like, oh no, quick, quick, I look murderous. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'll catch you later then, bye. Yeah, it's just one thing after another with Paul Murano. Outside, Kano talks to herself saying that she has the gift to sense the presence of her soulmate. Yeah, she's like, made up some girly sh- for herself. Yeah. But she likes Shinichi and she's like, well, that's clearly the only th- reason why I can sense him. But then she feels his presence. She jumps up all excited. And it's not Sunichi, it's Hideo, which means that it's not him that he said that she's sensing, it's the parasite. So she is definitely that. But now she's confused because she's like, well, I thought I figured this out and now it's wrong. So why? Hideo questions why she would think that if they look nothing alike, why would he why would she think it was him? He's now curious about Kana. He grabs her and tries to <laughs> cut her away but Sinichi appears and he makes um, Hideo let go Hideo says she's very perspective perspective perceptive <laughs> she's very perceptive and wants to talk to her <laughs> like, what do you do yes of course you want to talk not interrogate and torture Sinichi warns him if anything happens to his friends he will kill him and Fair enough. Like what with what Sinichi's been through, he's gonna have to be extreme. As he walks away, Hideo notes the weak signal, like the other parasites did before. So they are starting to catch on to him. So yes, they're gonna have to explain that at some point. Now Kana, little bitch, spots yeah. Murano behind Sinichi and loudly like, "Oh, walk me to the station before the bad bag gets me again." He's like, "Yeah, sure." Oh crap! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially since Kana like clings on to his arm and it makes it look like it's a little bit more intimate than it's like. But Shinichi's like turns around, oh poor Shinichi, like it's like. No. But they just pretend that she knew nothing about. It. She's like, "Oh, what's wrong?" It's like, oh, <laughs> bad bad girl. Kana confides in Sunichi saying how she can sense him and he says it's bad guys giving off these vibes to so stay away from them. And she's like, are you a bad guy? And he's like, uh, yes, yes, I'm bad, yes. Mm-hmm. Stay away from me. <laughs> so that's got rid of that problem. Because <laughs> a girl has never been attracted to a bad boy before. Ever, Considering no. that she was like part of a gang. In town at night, Hideo looks at a poster and transforms his face to look like the model. Yeah. Now... This just adds a whole new level of oh no. Yes. Stranger <laughs> danger, stranger danger. So now you don't know who they are. Now it's like they can disguise the disguise. And it's yeah. like, oh, humanity screwed. <laughs> They're evolving, literally. Yeah. Uh, so yes, he turns his face into the model that he sees on a poster. And then he scans the area like he's picking out his livestock. He's like, hmm, who is a good target? And then he sees a very sweet, roundish girl. Yeah. It's like, 
Oh, not the roundish girl. Yeah, yeah. So, but it proves that, like, Hidea and the parasite, he has a type, he has a taste. So he's not mm. just eating people discriminately. There's, like, he's got a... Yes, I like the innocent, plump ones. Also, the fact that he can turn into a good-looking boy. Yeah. Just which... makes it all the more... Probably like, easy. Because, you know, you're going to... You naturally just start trusting uh, the handsome, nice guy. Of course, and especially if you're like the girl who's either shy or doesn't normally get yeah. that kind of boy attention, and then all of a sudden a nice, good-looking boy comes up, so you're going to be like, Ugh. It's like he knows how to hunt. He is good yes. getting his prey down perfectly. Yes, so he's a worry. At Sunichi's and Dad is drinking in the dark again. Dad questions how Sunichi has changed. Uh, he's hard and hollow. And it's like, oh, even your dad is noticing. And he's going through something. Yeah. So... It's such harsh words as dad uses as yeah. well. It's just like, oh. Well, it, it's true, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's what is happening. Now, cut to Yuko's place, which is Sunichi's best friend. And she's drawing a picture of Hideo. Yeah. So we all know that she likes him and it's like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. She, she's the sweet, innocent, like not as attractive as her friend's one. Yeah. And no, <laughs> don't want anything to happen to her. Although Sunichi has already threatened him. So <laughs> hopefully yeah. Sunichi will help. <laughs> Cut to Hideo eating the girl. So he lied. Yeah. He said, I haven't eaten anyone in a while lies and fabrications yeah. so we know that he has nothing but bad intent for shinichi and that's the end yeah that's the end of that chapter Ooh. yeah new player. new player new player has arrived uh i hope we see more of udo soon because there's i mean there's lots of things happen during the course of the series it just of it course. goes through... i mean uh, it goes through like chapter arcs. Like I think this is one of the first animes we've watched that has arcs, mm -hmm. rather than most things. It's like one continuous story run through it. This one goes through the various arcs that were in the manga. Like I say, it'd be nice to see that character back again because he's got a feisty parasite, and <laughs> they're too good of a character to get rid of so soon. But yeah, um, it's yeah, it's <laughs> again we're only up to season uh, season we're only up to episode eight. And already things are looking grim. <laughs> yeah. Really grim. It's getting worse for Sunichi. It's getting worse for humankind. The parasites are getting clever. Yeah. And also there's a potential baby still coming. So we've got that to look forward to as well. I think Parasites, the character, I think he's one of my favourites at the moment. <laughs> like, there's a lot of good characters, but he's so different and so feisty and the the fact that he moved all the organs and everything i was like yeah, yeah. he's a good character and i really enjoyed that episode as well it's yeah. been one of my favorite episodes so yes it's, it's going good it's looking good and i can't i'm sure there's gonna be more characters as well so yeah. <laughs> who knows i get a totally new character right because we had a puppy death what happy thing can you tell me <laughs> well i think the joyous thing is it's the end of term Yay! Oh, yay! Six, weeks. six weeks of no work and can just watch anime and play video games i mean i have no idea when this uh actual uh podcast is actually going to come out and we might be into the last week i have no idea but yes. <laughs> from when this is recorded we have six weeks yay! <laughs> now my happy moment um okay so a bit of a story so i've always thought that my spirit animal was a panda bear the reason why is because I sit like one. I'm short and stubby like one. I wear the goffy makeup like they do. Um, I, if I could live my life sitting and eating, I'd do it. <laughs> like, you know, me and the panda, and we like to roll around. And yeah, love a panda. However, we have found that in fact, my spirit animal is a seal. The reason okay. being, the way that they move, gelatinous and <laughs> like blooping along. It's like that looks like me trying to get off the sofa. <laughs> so, <laughs> I might have to There's join that. you in this seal, although <laughs> I might be more walrus than seal. Well, <laughs> you I, you might relate to this then. My partner showed me a video which was called Seal Farts After Looking Directly At Me. And my partner was like, that's you. The fart, <laughs> the way it moves, everything is you. So if, if you're listening to this, go and watch that video. It's like literally 30 seconds long. And that's apparently me. So I've decided that my land animal is a panda and my 
water animal is a seal. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> but it did really make me laugh because it was just so happy with itself. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, go watch it. Seal farts after looking directly at me. That's what it's called. Beautiful. It's a classy <laughs> moment. It really is. I love it. Okay. Social media. This is a, this is a harsh one because parasite doesn't really leave you much. Like <laughs> you can have a chin parasite. <laughs> yeah, can I come in on my chin. I know it's gonna come in on my chin. <laughs> Walking chin. <laughs> <laughs> or just me sitting on my chin, riding it. Going... <laughs> Either way, but I'm coming in on my chin. Maybe <laughs> that's it. Social media and my chin. Ta da. My social media is coming in on a happy puppy. Ah, oh, look at the puppy, all happy and alive. Oh, look, he's licking the screen. Oh, aren't you a cutie? Bye, puppy. No death. No puppy death. <laughs> all happy puppy. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. Say goodbye, Lizzie. <laughs> so for now, this is a weeaboo saying journey. And this is a newbie saying seal fart. Beautiful.